Hey guys, what I'd like to do for you all in this video is share with you one of my favorite applications which I've got installed on all of my computers. It's called Cloud Mounter and what it allows you to do is map a cloud storage drive as if it's a local drive on your computer. It actually works with Windows and Mac but I'll be showing you Windows in this video. Now it supports Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, Amazon S3, Microsoft OneDrive and Wasabi and yeah, it's, it's very simple and what it does, it just shows your cloud storage account as if it's a local drive, as if it's connected directly to your computer, like a regular hard drive or solid state drive. It's a very simple thing, but it works very, very well. Now, I first came across this two years ago. Uh, you can see this article here on my blog. Big thumbs up for my blog. But yeah, I wrote this two years ago when I first came across this uh, application and I purchased it. And I was really, really happy with it. And it's one of those things that every time I, I, I get a new laptop or a new computer, after a while I always find myself installing this again. Now, this is not free. I'll say that right off the bat. It's $44.99. Um, there is a free trial available, available so that you can try it out. But what I will say to anyone who's scared away by buying premium software, I used to be like that as well. But what I would say is that there are free applications out there, free alternatives out there. Explore those, see if those can help you do what you need to do. There are some premium alternatives out there as well. I'm not saying this is the best software to help you do what this does. This is just the one that I selected and it's the one that I'm extremely happy with. Now, before I go on, I just want to explain why this is even necessary, why you would use an application such as CloudMounter. Why is this, you know, why is this even a thing? So I'm going to use Dropbox as an example and I'm going to show you how I use it and talk about how I use it. So this is Dropbox and I think most people who are watching this video have a Dropbox account if, if only just have a free account, the basic account, which is two gigabytes. The one that I use is the plus account, which says $9.99 there. I don't know why, because I'm on United Kingdom there. Should be in pounds, but I pay about 80 pounds per year for this. And I use this for many different reasons. I use it for many different reasons. Um, this is the Dropbox account, and this is all my files. And this is, you can see the little Dropbox symbol. That's you know, from the app. And this is all my files, all the files are synced and I've got website files, I've got photos, I've got podcasts, I've got, you know, there's a lot of business stuff, but there's, you know, personal stuff there as well, like family photos and different things. And that's how I used to use it. I used to use the official app, but over the years I've used it in a very different way. What I normally do now is now that most of my files are online, I simply go to the browser if I need to upload a direct, you know, a folder or a file or anything like that. If I need to download something of that, I'll just upload it and upload, download it from the browser itself. When I'm on the move, I use my phone or my tablet to access files as well. But I, I really just use the browser most of the time. Now, there's one, there's a few reasons why I don't use the app. One is that I, I don't like the app. That's 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 one of the main reasons. Uh, I find that it's quite. Um, it's quite invasive and it's quite buggy as well. Now, I'll show you that just now. If you look down here, you can see that it's actually loading up. And if you're a Dropbox user, this is what you're used to. And you know, there's similar things with Google Drive and OneDrive, they've all got these dedicated applications. Now, this is how you can see all your files and all this, you know, you can, you know, manage everything. But um, there's a few things that I don't like about this. Now, it's opened it over here, I'll bring it over. So this is the preference area, and just to, just as an example, something one thing that annoys me. See when I select selective sync to select the folders, you know which folders you want to sync to Dropbox. It doesn't let me do anything. Now you guys can't see that just now, but if I switch to this monitor, I'll keep pressing the same button. That's what it's doing when I'm trying to I'm trying to um, you know selectively sync the folders, and it's just not working. So it's a little bit buggy, and I've always found it to be a little bit buggy, but. Here's the biggest problem with Dropbox. I've just loaded that up. And look at this CPU usage at the top here. Dropbox is using more than OBS is using right now to record this video. There's OBS there. But, um, so it's been down a little bit. Where's Dropbox? I'll, I'll sort by name. So this is the, the main problem that I have with Dropbox. Um, it's there. So it's been down now, but Here's the annoying thing with Dropbox. I've found that when I've been doing certain things, playing games and all that, and something's wrong and everything's buggy, I then check my ta task manager like this, 
and I find that Dropbox is using 4% or 5% or 10% of my CPU. I find that very frustrating. It should not be using that much CPU. It doesn't always, as you can see there, once it's loaded up, it goes down a little bit, but sporadically when it's syncing files, it's just, it's just not coded well. You know, it's not an efficient program. I just find it uses too much. Uh, I seem to have Dropbox 32 bit into the 64 bit there as well. Now, I'm going to uninstall the Dropbox app. The only reason I've kept it is because I wanted to show you uh, the application in this video. So, what is the alternative? Well, of course, the alternative is CloudMounter. That's what this video is all about. And I'll bring this over. This is CloudMounter and it's an extremely simple application. So, like I said at the start, it says, select the type of storage you want to be mounted, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, Amazon S3 and Wasabi. Now I've got Dropbox uh, installed already, but if I had to click on OneDrive, you basically just sign in and that's it. You just authorize CloudMounter, that's it. You authorize it as an application. There's really not a lot of options here, guys. You've got new drive, you've got do you start it, log in. You don't have to start a login if you don't. Uh, if you don't want to, use a manual. It's extremely simple, this application. As I said, it's a simple application, but it's extremely effective. So I've got Dropbox here and you can name the drive whatever you want and you can unmount the drive and you can mount the drive at any point. So uh, this is the File Explorer and I've just unmounted the drive, so it's not there, but you can see drive letter Z or Z and I will mount the drive and it, will, it should go down there in a second. There we go, load up. There it's go, there you go, there it's there. Um, so I've got dro Dropbox there. Now, you can see here, so the, the drive is mounted now, right, I'll get out of the way. So that's effectively all Cloud Mounter does, is mounting Dropbox, my cloud storage drive, as a personal drive, and it shows you how much space I've got free that I can use, basically all of it from my account. But that's basically what uh, it's helping me do. So looking at uh, the File Explorer, you can see I've got my local drive. This is, you know, the one red is where I store a lot of YouTube files and different things. I've got a Samsung T5 drive attached as well. But what we're looking at here is this, Dropbox Z, Dropbox Z, 1.9 terabytes free of two terabytes. And it's, you know, it's just showing you your, um, your files. And this is it, these are the same files that I have up here. The same files. Now, the main difference here, which I'm sure you're aware of, is that these files aren't actually on my computer. They're not on my computer. Those are stored on Dropbox's uh, servers. They're just, you know, the Cloud Mount has just let me see these files as if they're stored locally. And I mean, you can, if I click on it, it's a little bit slower than a regular drive, obviously, because it's going online. Um, you, you know, I'm just going through files here. This, you know, these are just website files and different things, streaming files. Um, and that, you know, these are just different files that I use for producing YouTube videos and different things, but it's all there as a local drive. If I want to, um, I could probably do that just now. So I'll show, I'll show you an example of how this will work. So here's a document, Kevin's document, right? So what I'm gonna do is put it into the folder there. See that it's transferred the file. Now, if I go back to my Dropbox folder, there it's there. Kevin's document. Now that should not be a surprise, that's how cloud storage services work, but I'm just trying to demonstrate this works in exactly the same way as the Dropbox app. But the difference is that this does not use up sporadically 1%, 5% or 10%. And a lot of those applications, they're really doing a lot of things in the background that you don't need them to do. You just need to access your files and streamline your files. I know some people do want to sync the files on your computer and that's why they'll use an official app from Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever. For me, the way that I work, this is a much more effective solution. And after I've uh, uninstalled the Dropbox app, I can delete these files. So I can effectively remove 90 gigabytes of storage from my computer now. I don't have to keep all these files on my computer. As long as I've got an internet connection, I can access all of my files via Cloud Mounter. So I just wanted to share this, guys. I find this very effective. It's a very, very basic application. It really is a basic application. It really doesn't do much when you think about it, but it, it, what it does, it does extremely well. Now, at the moment, I've only got Dropbox, but I'm probably gonna try and sync up uh, my Google Drive and OneDrive files. And the good thing about this is you can use cloud storage uh, services from Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, all these different services. And if you're only using three accounts, you could use, you know, all of a sudden you'd have two terabyte, uh, two gigabytes, you might have 10 gigabytes between all the different services and you can store your files across all of them and just use this as one centralized hub. 
So yeah, it works really well. I'm really happy with it. So I'll, I'll leave a link to it. Um, again, I'm not saying that you should rush out and buy buy this. This is not a sponsored video by any, you know, any, anything like that. I'm not saying it's the most perfect application. It's just one of those things. I find myself always installing it. I find it extremely useful and I prefer to use this than the default apps from Dropbox and Google Drive, etc. So it's not free. So definitely look at alternatives out there, guys. Look at if there's any free alternatives that do the same thing. You don't want to spend money, do that. But, you know, because I use Dropbox as a business, uh, Dropbox for business stuff, you know, files, etc., for me, 45 bucks is, is, is nothing in the grand scale of things. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you've got a better understanding as to what you can do with software like this. I'll leave a link to it if you want to check it out, guys. But thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care.